state of the crypto market. I'm the altcoin analyst. Nothing here is financial advice. Let's dive in. So we have Bitcoin on the chart here trading at 62,000. We're going to bring up our $60,000 level, which I think is our interest or our area of interest there. And I was very clear that when we were back up here that I was pretty confident we were going to come down and retest 60 and that was going to be the test of, of whether or not we can uh, of whether or not October or the banana zone is around the corner. Now we are almost through the first week of October and it's not looking very good. Now, since we've come down back to the $60,000 level for the bulls, I would have liked a bigger bounce, a more violent bounce, but you, you take what you get in crypto. Now, We'll be looking for this level up here. If if Bitcoin can make its way up here and break above and reclaim, then that bullish structure that we have here will remain intact. However, maybe we don't make it up there. Maybe we just kind of roll back over and, and come down. So those are the two options. For the bulls, you know, that we're apologizing for just <laughs> grilling me in the comments. You know, I imagine that if we get back up to this level, you are once again going to tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> so, so don't apologize. I, I very much expect this being uh, having a, a side. But with that being said, I enjoy both bulls and bears comments. I, even, even if you don't agree with what I say, it's good to have something different than the normal, just everyone in the same room going, yeah, yeah, we're going higher. Now, I very much think we are going higher, but in the short to immediate term, it's it's questionable. Now, let's see if this is more or less what I'm looking at. Can we break above this level and maintain that bullish structure? Or uh, looks like we're having a hard time right now getting any sort of extension away from 60,000, which is concerning for the bulls. For the bears, I think it's likely that if this weakness continues, it's just going to roll over. Now, I have some data pulled up that I want to look at, but we can also go through ETH. ETH just looks pretty bad. I mean, the weakness in, in this chart is... it. This chart doesn't look bullish. So while Bitcoin might appear to have some sort of bullish structure set up here, ETH, there's nothing bullish about this chart. So I imagine we are probably coming back down to this level. And then depending on if that holds or not is again going to drive, I think, liquidity in the altcoin market. So if we look at the Bitcoin dominance, it's still, it, it looks like it's going to break up again. I expect this to continue to rally through the end of the year and then probably start to trend down sometime in 2025 in preparation for alt season, which I think even now is probably looking at maybe Q1 of 26, which I know that sounds like a ways off, but I think starting to ro and rotate into altcoins, I think early next year is probably, I think the only, the only downside risk to that would be an extended multi-year recession in, in the stocks in the economy. I think that's probably the only thing that would continue to put downward pressure on altcoins. But if those recession scares and, the, and we get behind those recession scares, I think it's it's pretty likely that the Bitcoin dominance will, will trend down uh, next year. Uh, after kind of Q1, I, I'd give it like a little buffer of Q1 maybe. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about altcoins here, but we will look at the ETH BTC chart. Did we put in a... No, we went over this last time. We did not put in a new low. So I think we're probably heading back down to 0.35 at the very least. It's kind of my first target. And then it's going to depend on really, I think, the Bitcoin pairs. Whether or not these hold up or if they've broken down. So this is more or less kind of the 
the end of the chain, no pun intended, kind of indicator that, that I'm looking at to drive everything. Do altcoins still have liquidity to give against their Bitcoin pair back to Bitcoin? And the answer is yes. Down here, the answer is no. So that's more or less where I would, I would start getting a little bit more bullish. Now, there's some data I want to look at here. I don't want to spend too much time talking about stocks. I think they're at all-time highs right now. We did get some good employment data. I think the next thing to look at is going to be inflation if that continues trending down. But the real thing I'm going to be looking at is the bond market and the yield curve on inversion on the 10-year and the three-month. And once we, once we start getting some time past that, there's been no soft landing with a yield curve that's been inverted and then uninverted. So while everyone's at this point even saying no landing at all, I would be cautious with that. And, and I don't trade stocks. So I use this as more of a metric to understand what Bitcoin's going to do because I believe they're very highly correlated. So the Dixie is also an important chart to look at, but for the time being, I don't think it's... I don't think it uh, is too important to look at. I think it's more going to be a reaction of what happens in the bond market. So, all right, that's enough of the charts. Let's go to the, some data here. And I want to bring this up. This is the price color coded by risk. And we will get rid of this one, this one, and this one. So it's 0.7 to 1. And then we are going to get rid of... 0.3 to 6. Now in history, actually we're going to get rid of this one. Yeah. In history, every time we've made it into the 0.7 to 0.8 color-coded wristband, we have always made our way back down to 0 0.2. 0 0.1 to 0.2. And we'll get rid of that because that one doesn't make sense so does that does that make sense so every time the price gets overheated we've always made it back down into the lower lower risk band so i think i think the prices are no longer here i'm gonna need to find out where those are but the looking at this in a vacuum which i don't think anyone should look at any piece of data in a vacuum suggests that we're going back to the 0.1 to 0.2 risk band before i would say going back up into the 0.7 and above risk band even the even 0.1 to 0.3 i think we can leave it 0.1 to 0.4 so i think that there's a chance if we do have a correction that we will go from 0.1 to 0.4. I think we are in the 0.4 to 0.5 right now. Or we were. Yeah, I think we're at 0.485 now. So something to note. Now the other piece of data I want to look at is the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index. Looking at this in a 14-day SMA, what I want to point out here is that every time we have broken below 40, we have gone into a more sizable correction. And so we broke below 40 right here in July of 2019. And then we went on for a nine month correction or six month before ultimately going up into that bull run. Again, same thing here. When we broke below the 40, we had a pretty long three month little correction altcoins did pretty bad over here before they went off and, and did a little bit better and so that's something to keep an eye on and then once again once we broke below the 40 here we had quite the long bear market i bring that up because we once again broke below the 40 on this moving average chart and actually went down into the 30 so and this is on the 14 day SMA. I know this is more of a bearish points that I'm bringing up, but I think I, I really think that no one talks about the bearish point of view very much. And just because that's my short term bias, 
that's more the reason why I'm kind of really hitting these bearish points. So I think, I mean, there's, there's always a reason to be bullish. The ETF, the having, the miners, it's in code. Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Whatever S curve adoption, the stock to flow model, whatever reason, fixed supply, finite supply, whatever reason that you want to put together, you know, is the reason to be long term bullish on this asset class, which is why I say the best long term strategy is to DCA Bitcoin, like a 401k, like don't even think about it, just mindlessly DCA, not financial advice. And, and we'll go back to the charts and learn how to navigate altcoins because in short you are exit liquidity little friendly reminder you are exit liquidity and so there's really only about a year in time that it makes sense to hold altcoins so just be careful out there i i very much started this channel because i think there's a value add of not endlessly showing you some kolc deal that i'm just going to unload on you later on now, the which is what I believe 99% of people with a platform do. And yeah, I think there's a lot of people that may have came in after 2021 when they, before they realized what, who those people were. And so I think you would be surprised. I talked about it early on in my videos Zach XBT on Twitter is a good person to follow. He good, he's good at calling people out. He's focused on kind of bigger scams right now, but I think he's a good person to follow. I might dig up some of his old tweets that he was forced to take down that I think really shine light on who good people are and who maybe not so good people are. Now, this is the Bitcoin search term interest over time, numerical value. I bring this up because this just keeps going lower. And I think we can count the 16 because this is data from September 29th to October 5th. Today is October 5th. So we have, and I don't know if this is UTC or not. If it's UTC, I think we have an hour left. It might be UTC, but I won't, I won't know. So interest keeps waning. We're seeing loss of momentum, I think in, in Bitcoin, especially in, in charts like Ethereum. Altcoins have kind of had this nasty little meme season. Like this, I think will forever be known as meme season and AI season. So if you made money on memes, great. Again, if you didn't sell altcoins in this realm, there's a good chance that you're probably down a significant bit, especially if you were buying altcoins in this range. And so that's just kind of the brutal nature of the altcoin market. We'll talk about altcoins tomorrow, but I believe that wraps up everything I wanted to cover. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.